Chapter 16 Shuddhamaya Nyan The I in its pure state In the previous chapter, we did that the subject and the object are one in myself. The experiencer and the experience are one in myself. The knower and the known are one in myself. There is no outside. So, there is nothing called experience. There is nothing called knowledge that is separate from me. I am knowledge. Yeah, there is no outside and inside. So let's dive deeper into this inquiry. He's continuing on the same lines in chapter 16. He's now saying now that I see that there is no Dvaitam, no two. There is no experiencer, experience, no subject, no object, no knower, no known. When you don't see the two, when the two has dropped, now you do the inquiry into this no two. So he says, dive deeper into the inquiry of who or what is this that is still saying I. Do you notice? There is still an I. So let's trace the journey of I from the beginning until now. When I was ignorant, what did I consider as I? There was a point in time, maybe in teenage or youth, when I considered this body as I. I got a little pimple and I was like, oh, I have a pimple. Remember those days? So you considered this body as I. Then you matured to adulthood. You started noticing the mind. A hidden, subtle assumption was made by you that I am this mind. As you matured, you became smarter, you became more intelligent. Then you started considering the intellect as I. Yeah, so I has naturally shifted its positioning. Are you seeing this? Initially, you used to consider the body as the I. As you moved into adulthood, you started assuming the mind as I. Then the position changed to the intellect as I. When you started feeling, oh, I'm more intelligent than all my peers. All this was happening at a very subtle level. Huh? You never uh, vocalized it or you never had a conversation about this with your friends or family. This was happening at a very subtle level where most of us were even ignorant about it happening automatically. What was really happening? Memory was connecting events and presenting to me a false continuity in my intelligence graph. And then I considered that false continuous intelligence as I. That's why you say this, no? Oh, when I was younger, I was not so smart. Today I am wiser. Yeah? Don't you say that about yourself? So what are you referring to? You are referring to a false intelligence graph. It doesn't exist. Memory has just connected events and it presents a false continuity to me. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I consider that false continuous intelligence as I. Not just that. Memory was also connecting events and presenting to me a false continuity in my own emotions and presenting it as an emotional graph. And I considered that false continuous emotion or feeling as I. 
Yeah, so I kept switching, the I kept shifting. Sometimes it was at the body, then it was at the feeling, then it was at the intellect, then it was at the mind. You, you kept jumping, you kept jumping. Now this is all happening at a very subtle level. Huh? You are not aware that this is happening. We are just looking back in retrospect now and recognizing, yes, that is what the memory was doing. And I, the awareness, forgot my stand and started considering the body as I or the mind as I, the intellect as I. Even this memory, sometimes we became one with it and considered ourselves to be the memory. So at the subtle level, I went through many different beliefs about I as I matured through life. Then came Advaita. Some of us got introduced to Advaita through Ashtavakra. Some of us got introduced to Advaita through Krishna or through Upanishads or Adi Shankaracharya or Gaudapada, whoever was the medium that brought this knowledge to you. What was your first introduction? I am not the body. I am not the mind. I am the witness of the body and mind. So suddenly now the I has shifted from the body mind to the witness of the body and mind. Do you remember those early days of Advaita level 1? Srishti Drishti Vada. I am not the body. I am not the breath. I am not the mind, I am not the thoughts, not the feelings, I am not the memory, I am a witness to all of this. Yeah, and you, you actually did a self-exploration, you did self-inquiry, you investigated. I know the breath, that means obviously I am separate from it. I know the thought. So I am separate from it. I know the feeling. I am separate from it. I know memory. So I am separate from it. I can see my intellect come up with smart ideas and total rubbish ideas sometimes. Ah, I am separate from it. If I am separate from them, how can I be any of them? You remember those early days of investigation? Yeah. So from Srishti Drishti Vada, I am the witness, Advaita level 1, you move to Drishti Srishti Vada, Advaita level 2, where you saw, oh, the sense of I, this witness is not continuous. This I is nothing but simply an I thought that arises and dissolves. This means that the witness that I considered myself to be in Advaita level 1, that is also not continuous, that also arises and dissolves. But who is knowing that the witness just dissolved? That means I am separate from the witness also. When this recognition happens, you have just begun your Ajatvada journey, Advaita level 3. So you saw your journey, it was just the shifting of the I. Yeah? Now the I shifts to pure consciousness, Advaita level 3. Yeah? I'll introduce a new word that Atmananda describes pure consciousness as. He calls it the higher witness. It is the witness of the witness. Because the pure consciousness notices the witness arise, the I arise, and notices it collapse also. If the witness collapsed, who knows that the witness collapsed? It is the higher witness, the pure consciousness. Be very clear, there is no new entity being introduced here. 
just a new word. I didn't want you to get confused if you ever came across the word the higher witness. Now it becomes clear that the pure consciousness is the void in which the lower witness, lower witness is the witness consciousness or the sense of I or the I thought. So it becomes clear that pure consciousness is the void in which the lower witness arises and then thoughts arise which means mind arises after that and then the body arises and then finally the world arises. So pure consciousness is that void which reveals the lower witness, the lower witness reveals the mind, the mind reveals the body and the body reveals the world. It is like a mirror inside a mirror inside a mirror inside a mirror. So the pure consciousness is the higher witness. So just to become clear, let's see what is the difference between the lower witness and higher witness. You can divide your page into two, just draw a line through the page and write lower witness on one side and higher witness on the other side. At the lower witness, knowing was the only possibility. The lower witness or the witness consciousness knows that there are thoughts, knows that there are sensations, knows that there are perceptions. So who knows everything? Lower witness. At the lower witness level, knowing was the only possibility. At the higher witness, pure consciousness, what is there? There is simply being. Just being. B-E-I-N-G. Simply being. At the lower witness, you had memory as a function of the lower witness. That's how you knew there's a sensation arising, there's a perception dissolving or there is a feeling arising and the sensation is dissolving or there is a thought arising and there is a feeling dissolving. So who knows all this? The lower witness knows and so memory is a function of the lower witness. At the higher witness, pure consciousness, what is memory? It is just another arising. You just see it as another thought that arose, that played for a while and it dissipated. That memory is also made of the same thing as consciousness. So there is no sense of duality at the pure consciousness or higher witness level. Do you see this? Yeah, Because that wave is made of the same water as me, the ocean. That is how the higher witness sees memory. And memory at the lower witness level is my function. I see, I understand, I am the witness. So do you see the difference between lower witness and higher witness? So continuing on the similar lines, lower witness can remember. The lower witness can connect. It can track things. Yeah, Because there is understanding, there is knowing, there is memory, there is... It, it tracks its memory. Yeah, it recalls. So at the lower witness level, all this is there. But at the higher witness level, there is no remembering, no tracking, no connecting things. There is simply being. At the lower witness level, there was a sense of separation from the body. Do you recognize? 
I am taking a stand as the awareness. You learned that way. You were just going to the witness level. Yeah? Separating from the body and mind. So there was a subtle sense of duality there. But what happens once you have recognized that I am the pure consciousness? There is no separation at all. In fact, you recognize it as a wholeness in which the witness, the lower witness arises, in which the mind arises, in which the body arises, in which the world arises. This is a complete whole. Yeah, you recognize the Purnata. So this Purnata is recognized only at the higher witness level, at the pure consciousness level. Yeah. One more distinction, one last distinction that I can think of is at the lo lower witness level you felt I am separate from the body-mind but I am still kind of restricted by this bag of skin. I am restricted here. You, f you kept feeling that the location is here. The location is not there. The location is not there. The location is here. That's how you felt at the lower witness level. But once you come to the higher witness level, to the pure consciousness, you see everything as simply a wave made of itself, made of consciousness, made of you, the consciousness. It is simply an arising. Yeah? Whether it is the body or the mind or the world, everything is simply a wave. That's it. And it is made of me, the consciousness. It has arisen right now. It is playing for a while and soon it will dissolve. Moment to moment, waves dissolve. Moment to moment, they dissolve. Yeah? So it's just the perspective, how your perspective changes. Your eye moves from this lower witness, which is the witness consciousness, to the higher witness, which is the pure consciousness. So homework for you. You recognize, has the I moved from this lower witness to the higher witness? Yeah. And homework number two, if you can think of any more differences between lower witness and higher witness, Besides the one that I could come up with right now, you can share it with everybody in the Sangha. So far, it's clear. The introduction is clear for everybody. Now we go to the first verse. So you will say, we have done this. But remember when you did it, your I was at the lower witness level. Now your I has shifted to the higher witness level. Now you look at the same point. In between thoughts and in deep sleep state shines that principle to which the word I points. What is Atmananda saying has already been recognized by all of us. Yeah, we've experientially seen that in between two thoughts there is a gap. In that gap there is nothing but this pure consciousness or the light of awareness. But now I have recognized from this higher witness's vantage point there is no gap in between two thoughts. In fact the thought 
is the gap in between the light of awareness. Yeah, so that which is in the gap is nothing but the light of awareness which is not visible as a gap between two arisings but actually the arising is a gap in the light of awareness. Yeah, this light of awareness is nothing else but the pure consciousness. It is nothing else but the real I, the Shuddhamya Nyan, real I. In deep sleep, these all these arisings are absent, the thought is absent, feelings are absent, sensations, perceptions are absent. Thus, there are no gaps in the light of awareness. Are you getting this? Now we are calling these arisings as the gaps. There is no gap in the light of awareness in deep sleep. The higher witness is present in its full glory. Undivided, complete. It is the principle to which the eye points to. Yeah? So Atmananda is saying, why do we always, all of us, anybody in this entire world, all 4 billion people, 4 billion people on this planet, all of us address ourselves as I. It's our common name. What are we really pointing towards? That light of awareness, that space of awareness, that is common. That is not individual. I don't have a private I and you have a private I. No. Yeah. That is what Atmananda calls the I principle. And he's saying that is what it points to. The light of awareness. So this is like the light of awareness. Yeah, There is just the light here. And nothing else. In deep sleep, there is just the light of awareness. There is no object. There is no gap. What is the gap? When I comes up. You see how it disturbs the light of awareness? So in the light of awareness, when an object comes, that is the gap. Are you seeing this? Yes, this is the gap in the light of awareness. So this is how the sense of I comes up. The witness consciousness or the I thought. Three different names given by three different masters. But it means the same. This witness consciousness, this lower witness is the gap in the light of awareness. In deep sleep... There is no gap. This light of awareness is shining in its full glory. Very clear? Yes? So, deep sleep is like this. Dream state, you have few objects. But they are quite blurry. And waking state, they are very clear. This is the reverse way of looking how we used to normally look at waking state, dream state and deep sleep state. We thought the waking state is the brightest state, the dream state is the blurry state and deep sleep state is the dark state. Yeah. Now when you come to the pure consciousness level, you realize, oh, it's the exact opposite, reverse the deep sleep state is the complete, full, 100% light, shining in its glory. The light of awareness shining in its glory. When it is disturbed by a few gaps, it is the dream state. And when it's disturbed by a lot of gaps, lot of them, continuous perception, 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 then it is the waking state. Yeah, so, what is Atmananda saying? That light 
which was shining in its pure glory. That is the real I. That is who we all are. And it's not personal. It's not private. How many infinite lights can there be? Oh, there's only one infinity. Yeah, And we are that common infinity. We are that one single light. Yes. So in that light of awareness appeared that lower witness, that I. And that lower witness is revealed by the higher witness. So is, is this very clear? Lower witness is that I and the higher witness is that light. The lower witness in turn reveals thought, feeling, sensation. Yeah, the mind and the body. And the mind and the body reveal the world. What does it mean by they reveal the world? Without the five senses, I cannot perceive sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. So, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch are not outside. They are inside me. But that perception level of mine becomes accessible to me through the level of thought, feeling and sensation. Thought, feeling and sensation work like binoculars. Through thought, feeling and sensation, I can go to the level of perception. Yeah? Um, for example, in an ocean, there are surface level waves. If you've ever really gone scuba diving yeah, you will notice all the turbulent waves are on the top yeah. from the shore you cannot see the quiet ocean to see the ocean life there inside what do you have to go through you have to go through the surface level of turbulent waves when you dive down deeper then you come to the ocean life and you realize oh my god this is another world down here yeah so the perception of sight sound smell taste touch happened only after i got through the top layer of thought feeling and sensation i had to dive down similarly the consciousness has to dive through the thought, feeling and sensation level and then only it can go to the level of perception. Everything is within consciousness. The bed of the ocean is also in the ocean. The top rogue waves, tsunami waves, tall waves, all inside the ocean. There is no outside. Yeah? Similarly, the Consciousness needs thought, feeling, sensation to look through or go through and perceive the level of perception. This is the meaning of the higher witness reveals the lower witness. The lower witness reveals thought, feeling, sensation and thought, feeling, sensation then reveals the world or perception. Very clear? So if this is very clear now, we will move on to verse number 2 and see what Atmananda is taking us towards. where he is talking about the gap in between thoughts or the deep sleep state. In the previous verse, he spoke about the gap in between thoughts and in the deep sleep state, 
shines the principle which is I, which is the real I. He's talking about the light of awareness. When the mind arises, when thoughts arise, they are just like waves. They dissolve into it and therefore they cannot perceive it. We have those uh, cute stories that we tell kids, no? That the wave went to look for the ocean and it kept looking and it kept looking and it kept looking and it could not find the ocean. So it was very exasperated and goes to its mommy and says, Mommy, why can't I find this so-called ocean? So mommy says, you are the ocean. Look within, you are the ocean. So the wave looks within and obviously because it looks within, it dissolves. It's a story, it's a little poetry. So it dissolves into the ocean and once it dissolves, there is no more perceiving left. Yeah. So in pure consciousness, in the deep sleep state and in the gap, every arising dissolves and disappears. Every thought, every feeling, every emotion, every idea, every concept, every judgment. Every pleasant sensation, every unpleasant sensation. Every perception of sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. All of these completely dissolve into the nothingness of pure consciousness. In that void, in that light of awareness, everything dissolves. And once they dissolve, there is no more perceiving. Yes, so now I had explained that the consciousness needs the level of thought, feeling and sensation to perceive the world. Yeah, when thoughts, feelings, sensations, perceptions themselves dissolve into the consciousness, where is perception? There cannot be any perception. So all this is mind. The mind dissolves into pure consciousness. That is why the mind cannot perceive the nothingness. It can never perceive the real I. So what really happens to the mind when it goes there? Why does it dissolve? Why can't the mind perceive the light of awareness? This Atmananda will tell us in the next verse, verse number 3. So I told you the wave went looking for the ocean. Mom said, you look within. When it looked within means the mind is directed towards the pure consciousness. When it looks within, it changes into that. The wave became the ocean. The mind becomes the pure consciousness. So the wave lost its characteristics, right? Similarly, the mind loses its characteristics. This is called Samadhi. This is your own experience. Whenever the mind is directed towards the pure consciousness, the mind dissipates into nothingness. It transforms into pure consciousness. The wave becomes one with the ocean. It merges with the ocean. It loses its identity. So when thought, 
turns inwards or the feeling turns inwards, it merges with the consciousness and loses its identity. Let's do this experimentally. And put your pens down for a moment. And with full attention, become aware of the heaviness of the body, yeah, the solidity of the body. Yeah. Now take a step beyond the body. Now notice the sense of I that is focusing on the body right now. The sense of I is the witness of the body or the lower witness. Now bring up a thought. This is the lower witness. Repeat it to yourself. This is the lower witness. That which is witnessing this thought arise is also the lower witness. Now let this lower witness turn within. Just like that little baby wave turned within. You turn within. Don't look at the body. Don't look at the thought. Turn within. Do you notice how the lower witness dissolves instantly? It is the fake I. It is fake. If it was real, if it was permanent, it could not have dissolved. It is simply an I thought. That means it is nothing but the mind. And whenever this I thought is directed inwards, it dissolves and disappears. And what remains after it dissolves and disappears? Just the pure consciousness, the light of awareness, the real I. The real I carries no sense of I in it. Do you notice the difference? So there's one more difference. The lower witness has a sense of I. The higher witness does not carry a sense of I. Yes? The sense of I was at the lower witness. It looked inward. It dissolved into the higher witness. Here there is no sense of I. Just a sense of openness, beingness. That is called Samadhi, he is saying. That is open-eyed Samadhi. When you remain as the higher witness. As the pure consciousness. As the real I. So the next question automatically arises. Okay, so when there is Samadhi, there is no thought at all. Is that correct? Is there just the nothingness of pure consciousness? So let's see what Atmananda responds to this in the next verse. Atmananda is one of the few teachers who has clearly said that whether there is thought or not, if you are turned inwards, if the arrow of attention is inward facing and not distracted by the thought, then you are in Sahaja Samadhi even with the thought arising, playing and dissolving away. 
you know this is revolutionary so this means oh there is drama going on in the family around me and there is a thought of anger or hatred or disagreement and it arises and it falls if i maintain my stand as inward facing not distracted by the thought not distracted by the drama in the family but constantly i am inward facing even amidst drama i am in sahaj samadhi yeah, he calls it the natural state because you are always self centered not self centered the way we learn in the english language huh this is a, a direct translation from the malayalam language self centered yeah looking inwards not outwards not distracted by thoughts feelings sensations and perceptions of the drama he says this is the natural state it is the simplest samadhi saint kabir says sadho sahaj samadhi bhali friends sahaj samadhi is the best and remember ha huh? sahaj samadhi is not chanting a mantra not chanting a mantra out aloud not chanting a mantra within not chanting a mantra because then you're stuck in the perception of sound it is not focusing on the breath because then you're stuck at the body level you're facing outwards it is not about thought you cannot think of a guru a, a god you cannot be thinking no thought because that is still outward facing what is sahaj samadhi when i'm turned inwards my arrow of attention is inward facing basically i stay as the light of awareness yeah. the same thing we learned in i am that what did nisargadatta maharaj say not using the witness consciousness is samadhi yeah in short letting the witness the lower witness dissolve and disappear into the higher witness without being distracted by external objects is samadhi